This short video lecture introduces vapor pressure, the clausius clapeyron relation for water, the dew point, and cloud formation. This picture shows a graph of the clausius clapeyron relation for water. The relation is named after German physicist and mathematician Rudolf Clausius and French engineer and physicist Benoit Clapeyron. On the vertical axis, we have the saturation vapor pressure, and on the horizontal axis, we have temperature here in degrees Celsius. Not only does air exert a pressure, but also the water vapor in the air exerts a pressure. We call this the actual vapor pressure, and if the air is fully saturated with water vapor, the saturation vapor pressure. The vapor pressure is usually expressed in kilopascals. The graph depicts that warm air has a much greater capacity to hold moisture than cold air. And this may be important when thinking about the impact of global warming on precipitation. The solid curve is for water and the broken curve is for ice. Ice has a slightly lower saturation vapor pressure than water. This picture shows cumulus clouds towering over Abkoude in the Netherlands. Heating of a moist land surface or open water and of the air directly above causes moist air to rise. This ascending movement of the air is a direct result of a heated pocket of air being less dense than the air that surrounds it. The air, when it rises, cools down. This is a consequence of the heat being distributed over a larger column of air. Cool air cannot hold as much water vapor as warm air, as is evident from the graph of the clausius clapeyron relation for water. The upward movement of the heated pocket of air continues until, at some greater height, the pocket of air cools down to the temperature of the surrounding air, which then effectively holds a further upward movement of the air. The saturation vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by water vapor molecules in the air when the air is saturated with water vapor. At some greater height, the continued cooling of an ascending pocket of moist air may cause it to become saturated with water vapor before it reaches the same temperature as the surrounding air. The relative humidity of the air is then 100% and the temperature has reached its dew point if this temperature is greater than zero degrees Celsius or its frost point if the temperature is zero degrees Celsius or less. At the dew point, condensation starts. This means that part of the water vapor in the rising air turns into liquid water, which is visible as a cloud. Likewise, at frost point, deposition starts, which is the change from water vapor to ice without passing through the liquid state and which is also visible as a cloud. The cloud can thus be defined as a visible mass of very small water droplets, one to thousand micrometer in size, a micrometer is one millionth of a meter, and or of ice crystals, when temperatures are low, floating in the atmosphere. Condensation is the opposite of evaporation. Water vapor has a higher energy than liquid water, which in turn has a higher energy than ice. Thus, with condensation, freezing and deposition, energy in the form of heat is released to the atmosphere. With evaporation and melting, heat energy is absorbed. Heat related to a change in phase of water is called latent heat. The water vapor condenses on small particles such as dust, sea salt or chemical substances that float in the air 
and act as condensation nuclei, causing clouds to form. In fact, condensation of water vapor can only take place at a relative humidity of 100% if these particles are present. This picture, also taken near Apkoude in the Netherlands, shows ground fog or radiation fog. Due to a clear sky at night with a light wind, moist air cools and reaches its dew point, condensation sets in and the fog develops at ground level, which lies as a blanket over the landscape. When you travel by car over the motorway in the morning, due to the higher temperatures caused by the traffic, there usually is no fog on the motorway itself, but you do have a splendid view of the ground fog that overlies the polder landscape. When the sun rises, the ground and air above it warm up, which leads to the air temperature being warmer than the dew point temperature, the fog droplets to evaporate and consequently the ground fog to dissipate. This picture shows stratus clouds, horizontally layered clouds, hanging over the Wesch Valley in the Hautes Alpes of France. These clouds are either formed through the lifting of ground fog or through cold air moving at low altitudes over this valley. <laughs>